Hi, my name is Stephen Rafferty, and you're watching These Are Questions. This is the interview show where I ask people questions about things, life, and such not. Today's guest is a talented actor, photographer, and model. Please welcome Melissa Chin. Melissa, welcome to These Are Questions. Hi, Stephen. Good to be here. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you for being a part of These Are Questions. Greatly appreciate it. So before we get into the interview itself, let me explain the rules of these questions. Melissa, I'm going to ask you a series of questions that are going to be based around your career aspirations, along with a mixture of questions that are borderline idiotic and, well, randomly stupid. Do you accept those terms? I, I do. <laughs> uh, you can't see the mic, but I'll bring it here really close real quick. I'm glad. Glad. Good. <laughs> better awesome so melissa are you ready yes do it it's gonna, gonna go for yes. <laughs> there you go it's like a boxing count countdown here internet are you ready that's that that's the screaming <laughs> that's the screaming pain because i just saw a guy got knocked out you know he was doing a, he was preparing for boxing and uh he got hit in the face mm. Mm. Oof, oof, oof. But it's okay. I'll t we'll take care of that guy after the interview. So we're good. We're good. We're good. I'll take care of him. You're going to take care of him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's already down. Don't hurt him anymore. <laughs> with that, let's begin. So it's a pleasure speaking with you today, Melissa. Really appreciate you taking the time to be a part of these questions. But I want to dive into your story and how you got into the acting and entertainment fields. Can you explain your journey on how it all started for you? Sure, I'll try to condense it. So basically my mom did a little bit of acting in her younger days, back mm. in the day. She did a lot of extra work and also a lot of video infomercials for jobs. So training videos. Okay. <laughs> so, some lady actually saw her and was like, you're in my training video. It was so funny. That's amazing. Um, but she was an extra in Edward Scissorhands and she always told me about that. And I think that's so cool because, you know, everything going on with Johnny Depp now and Johnny Depp is so iconic. So of course I was, oh my gosh, you, you were there with Johnny Depp. So I don't know. I She also took pictures of me every day when I was a kid. And so I've always been exposed to the camera. I had friends in high school that were let's take a photo shoot, let's do a photo shoot. And they're doing photography and learning. And so I was their muse essentially. Mm. And so I have a lot of practice being in front of the camera for my whole life. So I was on track for medical school and I never considered anything creative because my family, you know, they're, they're Chinese Jamaican, they're very traditional. They think that, you know, you should be a doctor or a lawyer, or the standard kind of job. And I just pushed career, aspirations for creative fields out of my head. So comes around, I graduate college, I'm on track for medical school, I have my major in criminology, my minor in chemistry, oh, wow. and I'm taking my MCAT. And I realized that I hated it. I hated it. So I was like, what am I even reading? The, the biochemical makeup of what I, I hated it. So I went through the classes and I also didn't really like them, but I liked the challenge. I like what made me think. That's what I like. I don't necessarily like what I'm learning, but I like being challenged and doing something different every day. So I started really considering, okay, what if I do acting? And the thought of that kind of scared me a little bit because it's not stable. There's no benefits. There's no insurance. There's mm -hmm. nothing. It's kind of a luck of the draw. It's very up in the air. It's not solid. So that scared me. My family gave me a really hard time with that. They, they're still giving me a hard time. They keep telling me, you need to do something stable. You need to do something. And I'm saying, hey, well, I'm pursuing something that I like and I'm pursuing my passion, passions. And my dad is in a job that he hates and he's miserable in it. And why would I want to do something that I would also be miserable in? So I went online and I started searching and I said, hmm, how to start acting, right? <laughs> and it's so crazy because Google answers all your questions like a genie in a little box, okay? Yeah. And I started finding agencies, which is crazy because usually as I'm you know, doing acting longer, you learn that 
you have to have a certain order of things. You have to start taking classes first. And then after the classes, you get nice headshots and then you start applying for student films and you start, you know, getting your reel together so you can apply to an agency. But I guess because in Florida, the Asian demographic is so low, I had some agencies that just instantly signed me just because I was Asian, <laughs> which a little unfair for, you know, some people, but I mean, for me, it worked out. Um, and then, so I ended up getting Ben's as my first agent, just because I also had a personal connection with them, um, mm -hmm. with a, my voiceover teacher, because I did a little bit of that as well. And he got me in, but Alexa and Level were the ones that, you know, took me in without any experience. And Ben set me up with some classes and just got started in, in, a, in an online class first. Okay. And after the online class, I took a little break. I moved to Tallahassee, made a little bit of extra money, and there was a lot of spaces in there. Mm -hmm. And once I moved back here, after maybe four months, I started hating it hard. And I signed up for in-person classes. I take them at Station 12 with Eugenie Bondurant. And I also took some with Lee Perkins at uh, Third Act Studio. And so they're, they're really great at what they do. And I don't know if you know Eugenie, but she's super reputable. Mm -hmm. um, she was the, the occultist in The Conjuring 3. Yo. <laughs> and she was cool. Tigress from The Hunger Games. And she's okay, been okay. in a lot. She was just walking for Balenciaga with Kim Kardashian for the, you know, Harris fashion shows. She's popping off right now. There you go. No biggie. Um, like it's nothing, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's important to me that I have a teacher that is also in the field and working so you know it's coming from a source that's actually booking and getting things oh so, ab absolutely yeah. that is so important to not just learn your craft and acting and taking various courses and and learning from different actors and, and performers but getting a teacher or a mentor that's actively in the field is so important because it's harder when it's someone that's not actually the field because especially in acting so many things change on a consistent daily basis so like you need to have someone that's actively in it so they can give you the right feedback that applies for your acting career so that's very important Surely. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, took classes for a good while with her. I still take classes with her, actually. Um, and I've only been acting for a little over a year consistently. Okay. So I had I got bookings from my agents and I also got bookings from Facebook, which mm -hmm. is surprising because that's what a lot of actors do. They join a lot of actor groups and then yeah. they find work through there. Um, and it's been a journey. It's been really fun. You know, I feel like I'm getting it together. I just signed with one of the more reputable talent agencies in Florida, Brevard Talent Group. Yep. So I'm super excited about that. And, you know, it's just been a journey and it's been a rough one, but I'm only going up from here, you know? So <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I wish you all the successes as you continue on with your acting <laughs> career. You're just starting and like, you're just like, a little fun here just starting right here and you're gonna have all this coming through oh you for sure on. I think gonna... the biggest thing is if you don't give up because that's what from my podcast because I also have an acting podcast um that's what I'm learning is the people that don't make it are the people that give up yeah so and and you could be so close like you're that you're there and you're so close and you're just like man because I know it's hard acting is very hard entertainment is very hard to get in and mm -hmm. there's a lot of rejection there's a lot of setbacks there's a lot of things you have to control that most people don't understand unless you're in it but you could be right here and then you say oh I don't want to do it you leave but the biggest opportunity of your life is like right there you know what I mean so you just yeah. have to keep pushing through keep doing what you're doing if you got to do stuff on the side just to make ends meet and make it happen you could do oh, it but you just have keep... to yeah but you have to <laughs> I agree I agree you know but I'm just saying if you like people think oh you're you work in a nine to five or you're working this job you're not a full creative or you're not a full actor there's some people in the industry that are like that and it's like no you have to do that to do the work that you need to do and also to survive sometimes you know so like you got to do what's work best for you you got to make your There's money definitely you got to make yeah. your opportunities so. That was one of my biggest struggles because I didn't feel like, because I did serving before and I didn't feel like going back to that because now that I had a degree, it made me feel kind of sad because oh. I'm like, what did I get my degree for if I'm just going to go wait tables? So I've been, I was searching for a job and I had a really good one for a while that I thought was my career move, but it ended up not being because it, it was a whole inappropriate work situation that I was not for. So I 
just got my, well, I had my CNA license because, you know, I was doing medical things and I needed clinical hours. So I said, you know what, why don't I, you know, just be a CNA. And I inquired around and I found a nursing home that's very flexible. They, mm -hmm. they claim I started maybe a month ago, so we'll see. Let's see. Um, we'll see. Okay. But well, they say they're good. flexible and potentially I could do like two days a week of work that are both 16 hours. That way I can just have five days free and that's full-time work right there. So I'm um, maybe I'll get my nursing certification, my RN, who knows, because that would also allow me flexibility because nurses, if you could join an agency, you can just make your own schedule. So I'm really considering that stuff because typically you don't really think of anything in the medical field being flexible, but it's actually fairly, fairly flexible in comparison to other jobs. Mm -hmm. And I was going to use the example of Dr. Uh, Ken John, who was in the Hangover movies and he had his own spinoff show. He was a doctor by day and then in the evening he was doing improv and stand-up comedy nights. So you know, finding mm -hmm. a way to balance it. So you could do nurse work on the day and then acting work on the side. And then you just build Surely. that to where you make your acting your full career. A lot Surely. of people start from their nine to fives and then they do their stuff on the side. So, oh yeah. And honestly, like to me, my focus is acting. That's mm -hmm. my main focus. And to me, nursing would be a side hustle. Like oh, that would be yeah. my side, my side gig. Because if, if it really comes to it and I have a choice, I'm obviously going to choose acting every time. You know, yeah. if I have a gig versus work, I'm going to call out. <laughs> it's going to happen. I got you. I got but you. I've I found that it's very rewarding and I do enjoy getting to know the residents. I cry every day, you know, <laughs> because they make me cry. Like they're so cute. And then they're crying. So I'm crying. And then oh, no. I signed up for therapy, but it's OK, you know, <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. But I mean, nursing homes are, are sad, but <laughs> it's it's a good stable side job for acting. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. And you know, you're you're not just an actor necessarily. You dwell in the different areas and different fields. They all kind of relate in some aspect, you know, including mm -hmm. like photography and modeling. You know, they're very similar in certain ways, but they're also very different in other ways. Um, could you tell me the differences and balances between acting, doing photography work and doing modeling work? Yeah, the biggest issue I'm running into is, well, there was this huge stigma for modeling at mm -hmm. first. Like if you want to do editorial stuff, you got to be six foot, this big around, so skinny and high cheekbones, high jawlines. You know, you have to have a weird alien kind of look or, you know, some sort of look about you. So modeling is huge on just your look. Nothing you can do. It's just what, what do you look like? And that's an issue that I'm running into because I'm more, ah, cute, happy. Yeah. And then this modeling things, there's more serious, you know, editorial looks that I just can't do, right. you know? I just had an interview with, um, what is the name of it? Premier Model and Talent. So I'm hoping, and they said, yeah, the industry's changing. You know, there's this girl that just booked in this 5'5". Five five. So I'm hoping for that, but that's one of the issues that I've run into. <laughs> yeah, for modeling. And it's easy to, well, not easy, but it's better to do freelance modeling first, at least, because you can start with collabs. You do. So this is similar with acting, too, is um, students that are learning, you collab for free. So instead of you getting paid, you guys just work together. They have meetups for photography um, and it's called Collective Meets or the Pexels Meetup or they have different ones around the area, but they make sets and you just show up and photographers collaborate with, with models and they take photos and swap them. And then you just give them credit. And so you have content after that and it's free yep. and you don't have to pay. They don't have to pay. So it works out for that. So that's the best way I've seen to get into modeling plus auditioning for runway shows and things like that, which I did one and that was really fun. <laughs> so <laughs> um, then with acting, there's a lot more training involved and a lot more money dropping. I'd say modeling is a little bit, it, it's still expensive, but to start off, it's less expensive to do modeling than acting because with acting, you have to pay for classes. You have to pay for headshots. You have like good industry headshots that you want. You can't just have somebody else take them because, you know, for modeling, you can collab with people and get cool shots. But for headshots, they have to be a certain yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Certain and, 
certain look, certain way, and you have to capture you perfectly. And then you have to, you know, get the representation because if you want bigger bookings for both, you have to get an agent. Yeah. yeah. But you can do small local stuff to start off. Like I did a shoot last this past week for a local boutique um, for an online shop and it was really cute. And so it's awesome. That was a lot of fun. And it was just, you know, it was for Haraya, the shop and Lathala Creative Studios did the shoot and it was cute. It's a husband wife team and we were just vibing. They were just talking to me. They were taking pictures. And so experiences like that is what I like. I like the small intimate, but also I can't wait to see the bigger stuff. Mm-hmm. absolutely that's well, gonna I'm... that's gonna be the future right there that's gonna be it's the first of many it's the mm-hmm. first of many for you so yeah and and then with photography because you asked about that too yeah um it's different being behind the camera because when you're in front of the camera you can kind of see what people are looking for and so mm-hmm. you know it's, it's good to do both because then you can help somebody else pose or you can know it's awkward or you know how you're supposed to turn how you're supposed to look angles everything like that. So that helps a lot knowing both. So that way you could do both. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I recommend it for like for actors, even if they're not necessarily going to be like a photographer or a video person, I would say get comfortable with just looking behind the scenes and seeing how the people behind the scenes do what they do. So you have an understanding and you can present yourself on the camera if you're doing film work or if you're doing theater work like see how the set manager and how the stage manager kind of do what they do have an idea of it so you can enunciate and pronunciate and do your craft to make it easier for both the stage manager and the people behind the scenes but also to present yourself in a better light so I always say try to learn both try to learn Mm -hmm. both so that's great that's awesome Uh, my next question is not so much a question and we're going to see if this works because you know internet connection um, it's actually a challenge. Um, I want to oh. challenge you to a staring contest. Oh gosh, I wear contacts. This is so unfair. <laughs> I, I I cannot confirm or deny if I wear contacts or not. So my eyes dry out ten times faster. So <laughs> oh, oh no, oh no. I'll get you some clear eyes. I'll get you clear eyes. All right, I okay. agree. All right, so okay. we're gonna do it. In okay. Three, two, one, action. Mm. oh that burns it does burn doing oh, great oh no way no way that's a blink dang there's it. no way you blinked <laughs> yeah you, yeah i did i did you were it was like one millisecond you were like <laughs> blinking and, I, and then my eyes went <laughs> i was like <laughs> <laughs> oh. good job you beat i feel me like for- the wider you open your eyes the harder it is to keep them open you gotta like neutral it yeah. Yeah. I felt it. Like I felt that I felt the waterworks coming in and I was like, Oh no, Oh no. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm dude. going down. I'm going down. Yeah, You're going down. Ah, you beat me. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> My next question is, do you like stuffed crust pizza? Um, that's hard. Are you talking like the stuffed crust is in it's thicker or a stuffed crust is there's literally something inside of it. It, 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 like there's cheese inside of it it's it's stuffed with cheese that's what i'm saying oh. it, it, it can be thick you know a thick cheese pizza is a good cheese pizza but i'm saying specifically there's cheese inside the crust you know i've never eaten that before but i think Ooh. i really would like that oh i, recommend I love it. cheese i love cheese good i mean good. cheese doesn't like me but i like it you know like 90 <laughs> percent of asians are lactose intolerant so yeah. are you yeah. lactose intolerant of course oh. <laughs> but it's not bad i just break out in a lot of acne Okay. So like okay. cheese hates me, but I love cheese. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, uh, I gotta, I gotta FedEx you a stuffed, a stuffed crust cheese pizza somewhere. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm okay. ready. Okay. I'll send it to yeah. your address. We'll make, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. And right. um, you kind of actually through your mind and through your answers, you're actually half answered my next question. Okay. Uh-oh. So, which is good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So um, you said you really like cheese, which is great. Part of that question is, do you like games? I do like games. Okay. Okay. Cool. cool I like cool. cheesy games too. Oh, well, they, I got the game for you. <laughs> so one of my many, many different projects that I've done over my crazy, crazy career is creating this. This is a card game called No Cheese, No Coin. The card game for people a who like cheese. literal cheesy game. Yes. A literal <laughs> cheesy game. A card game for people who like cheese and money. Okay. 
So I do like both of those things. Then you'll be the perfect demographic for this game. I highly recommend <laughs> it. You can buy it right now for twenty dollars US. Twenty dollars. <laughs> I have to plug. It's my show. I have to plug. He's a podcaster and a salesman. That's right. A, a, sa- a salescaster. <laughs> Forecaster, weatherman, yeah, cheese too maker. Good. Too good. You're too good. Um, You're too good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. So I do have a reason for this besides the shameless plug. Um, okay. you, you ever, you ever uh, have or uh, know about tarot card readings or horoscope readings? Oh, we don't mess with those. We don't mess with those? Okay. 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 <laughs> well, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Well, I'm going to do something kind of like that. We're going to determine through this game, a game within a game, we're going to determine your cheese type. Oh, okay. 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 Great. So I have some cards here from uh-huh. the game and I'll shuffle it up just like, you know, if someone did do a reading and it's fine if you don't have to do readings or not, I don't even know how to read to begin with. So um, we're good there, but I'm going to shuffle it up. Nice <laughs> you is there. illiterate. Me is the lit. <laughs> That is me. And I'm going to pull out my hand here. And I just want you to pick a card, the card that speaks to you. Use this hand to tell me where to go. Can you even see if I point to it? Okay. Yeah, I can see the one that's peeking out right there. This one? Yes, sir. Right there. Okay. Okay. You, my friend, are Brie cheese. Brie. Fancy cheese. Fancy cheese. Fancy cheese. Me is Brie. Got it. Yes, you are Brie. You Brie are you. Um, it's Brie a fancy cheese. The nice cheese, if you've never had it, it's very nice. Um, it goes great with crackers and goes great with like if you drink wine. I don't drink, but I know people that do drink wine, and they say it's really good with Brie. So mm. recommendation there. In the game, this allows you to make another player reveal their hand. So your revealer, the revealer. Oh. oh. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. There you go. That is your cheese right. type. You're Thank you. Cheese. You're welcome. I'm You're Brie. Welcome. You are Brie. Yes. You learn more things every day. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. 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 Sorry, I came back with cereal. What kind of cereal did you get? Granola. Okay, okay. Granola is good. That's healthy. That's lean. Mm-hmm. That's a lean cereal. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, I like a good granola, a good trail mm-hmm. mix. Cinnamon raisin, yeah. Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. You're a cinnamon raisin trail mix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Highly recommend. It's good with fiber. I don't know. Mm. If you want to eat first, I go for it. If you want to, before we oh no, eat, I'll can... take a bite and then you yeah, can eat. You can eat good. on the episode. I'm not gonna stop you. I can't. I oh. can't. I can't physically stop you because we're in two different locations. So you could pretty I mean... much do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm just saying. It'd be like, yeah. Um. <laughs> so <laughs> the the listeners would be like what's going on here and <laughs> it's like why is there popping now so just... i just want to let you guys know that i'm uh eating granola on the air so on, air? Mm-hmm. on, on air granola on air that's a good name for a band right yeah yeah mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. Be, be a jazz band uh gor- gorilla gor- 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 gorilla on air no granola on air why does it gor- you know what i was in a jazz band i'm going to start that <laughs> good you can mm-hmm. be the lead you can be the scout oh, yeah. man it's funny because I'm a flautist, so like, oh wow, really? Flutes, flutes aren't usually in jazz bands. Sometimes, mm-hmm. like they are, but they're not typically. Okay. So it'd just be like so random. It'll be great though. You, you should start it. I'm just saying, you'd, you'd be mm. good at it. You'd be good at it. Mm. You, you'd be you'd be unique. With your I think you should name this episode "Granola on Air." I will. I'm telling you. Mm. I'm writing it down right now. Mm-hmm. Granola on air. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. We'll do a poll. We'll tell our. We'll tell our. We'll tell our. Um listeners and watchers to be like hey do you like this name for the episode or do you like this as a band mm-hmm. and, 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 and the internet will tell us to keep it or not mm. the internet is unmatched yes yes mm-hmm. yes so melissa on your instagram profile when i was doing some research about you at uh-huh. mac melissa which is a great handle um, thank you you said that in your bio that you spent six hours on a buffet uh, oh yes can you go into details of that day and yeah for sure. So <laughs> eating is the one skill that I have that is unbeatable. Okay. Okay. I will. I love eating so much. I eat more than physics should allow. And uh, ever since I was little, you know, my entire family will, will be at dinner and then there'll be leftover food and they'll just be like, oh, Melissa, clean it up. You got it. Right. Um, I don't know why my metabolism's crazy, but 
it's worked out for me. So That's good. I used to work at a hot pot place. I don't know if you know what hot pot is. I, I is have, I've had it once. It's pretty good. It is fantastic. It's mm-hmm. Chinese style soup buffet, essentially. And they also had barbecue. So you could do Korean barbecue in front of you with the soup. Ooh. And you can sit there because typically they have a cap for those kinds of things, like two hours or so. But honestly, they never really kick you out. But I was so determined to make a record for myself. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to see how long I can sit in this hot pot place and consistently eat. So I invited some people and we all got together and we got the little private room. And I was like, let's do this. (laughs) And I just sat there and I set the timer and I was just like, (laughs) how long can I take to sit here and eat hot pot? And it's great because you just keep getting up, get some, keep eating. And like, you know, when there's fun people there, it's actually very enjoyable. It's like a whole hangout sesh. You know, you can talk and you can cook and you can eat. There's something to do. There's dessert. There, it's just so much fun. It's so much fun. And I tried to submit a Guinness World Record for it and they declined me because they said it wasn't competable enough. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I, I was just thinking about that, like no joke, because I am a former Guinness World Record holder. Um which is crazy. Um, you want to guess what the world record was for? Oh, God. Uh, no pressure. Having the most curls in your hair. Well, that was a good, that's a very <laughs> good, that's a good guess. Um, thank you. Very good. Uh, it's close. It is hair related, but not for the most curls. Um, I don't have it anymore. I got beaten back in 2016 um, by a guy, um, Razi from the show Blue Peter. He broke it on television, um, which that's a story for another day. It's okay. He's all right. He's, he's good with me. But uh, I did have the Guinness World Record for two and a half years. I had the world record for the most straws in my hair at one time. Okay, so I was close. <laughs> you were close. That's, I said, I that's a really close. good guess. Yeah. Because each ring let hold a straw. You see yes. that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's great. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. So that was my quirk, quirky world record. I had it for two and a half years, but I was going to say from what you were telling me, that would have been a really good world record attempt. That's and what was... I'm saying. Why isn't it competable enough? Maybe I need to word it differently, but I wasted $5 because they just took my money. Oh, really? They take it for submissions now? They used yeah, to not because, do that. Because they don't have that as a world record. So I was proposing a new oh, one. Okay. Yeah. So they were like, oh, not not beatable enough like you can't nobody's gonna compete for that i was like yes they will absolutely i I think maybe i was too specific but i just said like longest time in a buffet like that's pretty general what do you what do you can do though like serious talk if you want to try to attempt it or try to have something similar because i had the i had a similar issue because i wanted to do most pens in my hair um long 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 super quick story uh i was working for a newspaper station and the um graphic designer decided to put like 30 pens in my hair and it stuck and we were like, there's probably a world record for this. And then I started researching, looking it up. And originally I submitted that, like most pens in the hair. But then the person back said, we don't have one for pens, but we have most straws in the hair. And that's how that went through. So maybe <gasps> you can look at the database because that's free. You can look at the database and see if there's something similar to that, that applies for that record. Honestly, though, sitting for how long in a buffet, that's like, that's pretty impressive. Like that's, I feel like other people would do that. You know, so I don't understand why I got denied. They're very specific with certain things. And like, if there's a record that's very similar to it, they're just going to redirect you to that. So there may be something similar to like someone having the most, I don't know, most food at a buffet or most plates eaten at a buffet or something like that. So well, here's the thing. I'm not quantity. I'm endurance. (laughs) I'm an endurance eater. So I go long. (laughs) If if, I, I don't. Not gonna get into relationship stuff, but I said that would be a good quote for like a Tinder profile or an online dating profile. Uh, oh, not yeah. quantity, but in, I have endurance. Uh, not quantity, but endurance. <laughs> That's too good. That's too good. There you go. Write that down to the notes there. I know, right? Mm-hmm. It's in mm-hmm. the it's in the dome. It's in the dome. In the noggin. <laughs> so, um, I do want to talk about your podcast, though. I want to talk about oh. the Dream Podcast, which if you're ever doing more episodes and if you need a guest, um. If you're interested, I would love to be a part of it. It's up to you. If you don't want me, I understand. I'm not for everybody. But if you, <laughs> if you do want an episode, I'm more than happy to join on there because I listened to a few of your episodes and it's really good. 
Oh, so, thank you. You're welcome. I was listening to the Lori Weinman episode because I know Lori mm-hmm. Weinman. She's down oh, here. Yeah. She's like the big casting agent down in South Florida or one of the big casting agents there. So I, I got a chance to listen to both your, your your take on it and her take about the agency and the industry down in South Florida and what to do there. So that's really cool there. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, um, what was the main reason for starting the podcast and interviewing various figures in the acting, um, voice acting and entertainment industries? So for my last job, my boss was this creative genius. Okay. Mm -hmm. So even though I don't work there anymore, I still respect him a lot in that sense because he knows how to do everything. I swear this man, everything. So he gave me this idea and he said, why don't you start a podcast? And I never really thought about starting a podcast before, but I said, okay, sure. Why not? Because he had a very successful podcast, but his idea for me was that for the podcast, for me, it wasn't to reach listeners and to, you know, of course you want to share information with people and everything, but it's more about the connections that you make doing the podcast. And I, the more I thought about it, I said, oh my gosh, that's so genius. Because if you email a casting director and you say, hey, I'd love to chat with you about what you do. They're never going to answer you. If you say, hello, would you like to be a guest on a podcast? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah if you say you want to be a guest on a podcast it is the most least annoying way to to access them you know so it it just gives you an in and you can have a good conversation maybe they remember you you know and as an actor it's good to make those connections and then you go from there and they remember you and because I interviewed Carly Lolan she was a casting director she is a casting director in my area over here in like the Tampa area. Mm-hmm. And I had been emailing her my headshot every time she sent out a casting and she never looked at it because there's just so many people that send her submissions. I sent her be a guest on a podcast. She instantly answered me. Yep. And because of that, she remembered me. And not, that's how I got on my first movie sets as extras. Mm-hmm. So that's how I got to work with um, Justina Machado. She literally grabbed my neck in a scene and was like, yeah, because we just did a party scene for a movie. Um, and then I got to see Greg Sulkin. Oh my gosh, childhood crush, Greg Sulkin. That is like Disney. My 2010 self was crying. Um, and then, you know, it's just these really cool opportunities to see different actors. And Naomi Grossman, that's how I got her on the podcast because I saw, I met her on a set. And David Faustino as well. Very, very cool. So, you know, because of the podcast, it's opened a lot of doors um, because uh, actually funny story there. Um, because of the the podcast, I met Carly. And then because of Carly, I got on the a movie set mm-hmm. because I was on that movie set. I networked and then I got to be a PA on the set for Ooh. a week. And because of that, I networked with some people there. And I met this guy named Emilio and he's been really awesome connecting me with a bunch of different people. And he just connected me with a couple here at Lakeland because I'm in Lakeland, right? Yeah. And they actually have a production company that does music videos and they've done music videos for Danny Yankee, mm-hmm. Arcangel, um, Jer- Jay Wheeler, you know, just these notable reggaeton artists and reggaeton's my favorite genre of music. Okay. So I'm going crazy over here. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so they want me to help them with their production company. And so I'm like mind blown right now because of Carly and about the podcast, it worked its way all the way here, you know? I know, and it, co- it comes full circle. It comes full circle. Um, oh, for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. And uh, I'm glad. It's a good podcast, and I hope you keep making more episodes there. And and it's it's funny because that's kind of my he- mindset when I started These Are Questions. Like, I always wanted to do a talk show type thing. That's how I started my early YouTube like career because mm-hmm. I'm originally a YouTuber slash stand-up comic. That's where my roots started. Um, but with e- These Are Questions, that was kind of the premise behind it. It was like, this is going to be a way for me to connect with different creatives. And, and I always wanted to promote talent that may not be necessarily well-known or they're getting to be well-known so they can Mm -hmm. use that as a platform to be maybe one of their first professional interviews or maybe an interview that they really need or a comedic take on an interview to show their other personality that's why I created these are questions there and like now four seasons in we have all these different guests from all walks of life and I've interviewed celebrities Emmy award-winning podcasters the tv hosts uh, writers authors photographers you so like interviewing everybody like look at this and it's the same thing when i contacted you and emailed you 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 knew nothing about me 
but I saw your profile on an Instagram and then I listened to your podcast and I knew you connected with Lori Wyman. So I was like, okay, this woman is legitimate here. And I wanted to interview her and you had a good voice, a good speaking there. And I saw your acting <laughs> work, your photography work. I was like, okay, let's do this. And here we are. So like, here we are. there you go. There you go. So it's the power of social media. It's easier than ever to connect with some of the biggest people in the world, like dead really? serious. It's easier than ever. Now, back in the day, it used to be so hard, so difficult. Now, one message, one email, one text, one contact, knowing a person, knowing a person, and boom, things happen. So yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's wild. And it's great. <laughs> and look at us. We're doing it. So. We're doing the thing. We're doing the thing. So um, that's great there. And uh, before I go on to my next question, I do have a side question too. Since you since you mentioned reggaeton, what's your favorite reggaeton artist? Oh my gosh, that's so hard for me because I don't even have favorite artists in other music. You know, I just okay. really love, I love the whole genre. You know, I mean, Bad Bunny is pretty, you know, he's pretty up there because he's one of the top people. But um, I do, I guess I would say Bad Bunny and... The, the best songs, though, are when they collab. So it's not just one. It's when they have those collab songs. So, like, Fantas Meath is such a good song. And, like, when Alex Rose and a bunch of them combine, you know, it just, it's good. It's And I also really love salsa, you know, just Hispanic music in general. I learned Spanish in high school, and I only took three years of it, but I actually you know, grabbed onto it and I practice it. So now I'm fluent. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah. I actually just submit an audition for a Spanish speaking role for a, like a TV show, something, but I don't feel confident enough to do something crazy, but it was just you're, for a small. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to be in a telenovela. So like, let's go, let's go. Yeah. Let's like go. somebody make me the token Asian in a telenovela. Let's mm -hmm, go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, me, 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 hablo no espanol, me estupido. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Really good. Ah, that's wonderful. That's awesome there. Um, my next question, why are puzzles so hard? There's so many pieces and they cut them weird. So then you try and put them together and it just, are you talking about literal puzzles? <laughs> Cause that's where my brain went. <laughs> that I was is, like, that's a puzzle. <laughs> <I'm trying> to... <laughs> I, you know, it's because I work at a nursing home and I see them like sitting there and just doing puzzles all day. Oh my goodness. I couldn't. No, I don't want that. Uh, puzzle, I don't, uh, no puzzles, no Rubik's cubes, none of that. Like, no, uh, the only puzzle I like is Tetris. Like I like Tetris. I get that. Yeah. But, but that's it. I don't know. They my, make them hard. That's why they're hard because they're made to be hard. Good answer. Mm, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the best answer right there. That's the best Thank answer. Thank you. I so, hope. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> um, so, you know, I know you're, you're, I would say you're in your early stages of your acting career, and I hope you have many more projects to come and you have the time to make things happen. You have the time to screw up and you have the time to make projects happen. You have so many opportunities there, which is wonderful. Um, my question is, what's one of the best pieces of advice you have received so far in your career? That is so funny. Okay. That is actually, I would say from one of my mentors, um, it's Mary Rachel Quinn that said this and she said auditioning is your job booking is your bonus oh right I, I was like whoa because it it teaches you and it encourages you not to be discouraged as an actor because you can submit hundreds of auditions and be so discouraged and get maybe one back or none back you know so just remember that your job as an actor full time is auditioning because you put so much time into it and you don't really get anything out of it, but practice. And it's you and your field, you and your craft, being in classes, doing auditions, being active in that. And then when you finally book something, that's your bonus mm -hmm. for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. So I just love how she phrases that. That's a wonderful phrase. That's a really good phrase for actors right there. Yeah, that's that's good. That's a good one. Keep that keep that one. That's gonna that's gonna take you far. Secured. Secured. She, she knows what she's talking about. She does. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shout out to her. Yeah, she was in Outer Banks. Oh, cool. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> and Dear John, I think. Yeah. Okay. Dear John. Very nice. Very it's pretty nice. cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I have one more question to ask you before we go into our end for these are questions. And the question I want to ask you is, 
if you had a chance to make a painting, any type of painting for any art festival in the world, what type of painting would you make and which art, art festival would you place it in? You Loaded stumped question. me, Steven. You stumped me. I am the stumper. <sighs> I don't know. Art festivals. Mm -hmm. I can't really come up with something specific, but I could tell you about the painting. It's not going to be specific. but it, okay. So the biggest thing with art is the feeling you get from looking at it. Right. So I'd want to make something that is like when you look at it you feel everything like you feel happiness sadness grief anger and you know just you look at it and you just feel all these emotions what that is don't know but the the paintings that evoke reactions are the most successful ones if you've noticed so I would submit it for the the top I'd go all the way I'd be like yeah the top competition for that I'm not so sure about the the competitions but actually it's funny you say that because I actually model for a painting group and it's a bunch of little, um, they're so adorable. It's Ringling art teachers, but also some freelance artists and they're all like, then they're, they're older and they're so adorable and they just sit there and they paint together every Friday. I love them so much. And so mm -hmm. my boyfriend and I went and we posed for them. And one of the artists, his name is Buell. He actually painted this, this painting of us and it looks so real. And he just submitted it for an art festival and it just got accepted. Oh, I wow. It's funny that you say, I can grab it if you want to look at it. Uh, sure. Yeah. Go for it. Give me it. a second. No, you're good. You're good. So there's a canvas version, but he printed out a little paper version because the canvas version stuck to my wall. But okay. this is the painting. Oh, wow. That's so mm -hmm. good. Yo. Right? Yeah. Crazy. But That's like people looked at it and I guess they got they're like oh it's cool because it's like an interracial couple you know and then we're, you're like what are they thinking about what are they doing <laughs> yeah like what are they looking at you know mm -hmm. what it is seen in the distance are they seeing maybe the future or mm -hmm. their past or, or their present mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. okay i get what you're saying you definitely want an art piece that spokes all the feels yep and we'll see how far this one gets in the competition but it was super good i hope it i hope it wins all the awards wins i know right Mm -hmm. <laughs> put it in all the art festivals all the big ones every single one of them right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well it's it's being shown right now i think so it's getting judged we'll see what happens fingers crossed fingers crossed. but i mean the fact that it's it was accepted they only accept they have thousands of submissions and i think they only take like 200 or so wow. it's not easy it's very hard so but that's awesome, though. And I was thinking if you had a festival, I was thinking maybe we have a festival that happens in Miami every every year, Art Basel. So um, that's like all the famous artists and all the big people and stuff. So maybe you can go in there. All right. Yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. If you look at my invisible hand watch, you know what? Actually, I've been doing this outro for how many seasons and it's never good. Can you think of a good outro for me? Ah, uh, why do you do this to me? Because maybe I need I need help. <laughs> Anything. What are, you, what are you going for? What are you going for? I, I just just a nice send off, a nice completion that we made it. We had a great journey here. I got to learn a lot about you, a lot about myself, a lot about paintings, um, granola, like all kinds of stuff. Just need that's something. exactly the send off. Just that's just like off? that. Just like it's, that. We learned a lot about you, about you know acting and painting and granola. <laughs> okay there there you go you got my outro we got it there we got it there and um we're gonna finish off with that but before i finish off i want to open the floor to you anything you want to talk about anything that you want to do anything that you want to say before we end off this interview the internet is yours take it away oh that's a lot of pressure steven <laughs> it is a lot of pressure that's why i save it for the end well i I always love ending on an encouraging note. So just to all the people listening that are aspiring actors, I just want to pass on the advice that is told to me on all my episodes is the never give up because if you're going to be discouraged, you're going to be really frustrated, really frustrated, and you're going to want to quit. But just remember that if you quit, you lose. So 
you don't want to quit. You just want to keep going and keep doing it, keep being in it, and something will happen from that. So that is my advice. <laughs> All righty. Good advice, good advice, good advice. And just like that, we are at the end of these are questions. So for those that are watching on YouTube and those that are listening on any applicable podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you have been watching slash listening to these are Our questions. questions. Oh, you, you, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs>